Welcome to the first part of a three-part series in creating a basic platform style game frame. And I'm calling it a frame because it's not going to be a finished game. It's not going to include uh, scores or points or a way to win or lose. That's going to come in the second series for this uh, project. Uh, in these three videos, we're going to start just by setting up the window, drawing the characters, making our variables. That's this first video. In the second video, we're going to talk about how to make things move around and interact uh, with multiple keys at the same time, learning how to import libraries. And in the third video, we're going to create a world of gravity so objects can fall or not fall as we work through. So we've already made a new program. If you have not done so already, log into openprocessing.org make a new sketch. Uh, we're going to start with just some basic housekeeping items. So we're going to make a section called global at the top of our screen. I like to then break up my setup with a comment, enter draw down a little bit, break up draw with a comment, comment my close bracket. So close setup and comment my close draw bracket as well. Now, we will not need this ellipse command in draw. We will not need this background command in setup. And we're going to make our screen size, uh, we're going to change that to be 800 pixels in width by 500 pixels in height. Now, we're going to need some variables here to actually work through. Uh, we're going to be adding variables throughout all these videos, but there's a couple that we know we're going to need right out the gate. I like to break my variables down in sections, so I'm going to call these player. Um, so we're going to have at least one player in this game, so we'll make a variable for the player's x and y position. I'll call those p1x. Um, and we can also set an initial starting position. So I want this guy to start right in the middle of the screen. So that's going to be 400, because our total width is 800 divided by 2 would be 400. So var p1x 400, I'm just going to do p1 for player 1, just a nice little comment there. Let's do var p1y, um, I'm going to set this towards the bottom of my screen, say 375. So not quite at the bottom, but approaching the bottom. And I'm actually going to make variables for the width of the and the height of the player as well. So I'm going to call this p width, which will be 30, and var p height which I'm going to set to be 70. You don't necessarily have to do variables for your player's width and height, but um, if we look at the classic Mario game, if Mario eats certain things or grabs certain things, he actually changes his size, so he grows in size. Um, if you want that to happen, you would need variables for the size, so I like to have that. It also makes collisions a little bit easier down the road as well. Now, in addition to the player, we're going to need boxes or you can call them platforms, uh, to jump on. So we're going to make some variables for that too. I'm going to use the letter B to control my boxes. So I'm going to do B1X. And I don't know, we'll just put this somewhere kind of random on the screen, off to the sides. So let's do 200. And I'll just do the same comment. B1 for box 1. Or B1 Y. Uh, we can do something like um, uh, 300 var b width 200 var b height 40. Now the great thing about variables and by defining these things is down the road as we start to draw things on the screen if it just doesn't look right if we want to customize or personalize them in any way we can always scroll back up here to global uh, just that way we can always make some changes whatever it might be. Uh, now, moving into actually setting up our game, we're going to be eventually adding levels, splash screens, welcome screens, game over screens, and then for that, we're going to actually have to be able to switch between stages or modes in our game. So I'm going to make another variable section here, and I'm actually going to put this one at the top just for organization purposes, but you don't have to. I'm going to call this game control, and the first variable we're going to make is just called stage, and we'll start that set equal to zero. And this keeps track of which function to run. Um, you can call these variables anything you'd like. Also, I did capital X and capital Y and capital W, but you, you could really name them however you'd like to do whatever works for you. Next, in our, uh, let's see here, 
in our function setup, we're just going to set our modes. So our rect mode to center, I like to do these right away. Our text align center, just get those done. In draw, we can call functions, which we don't have any to call yet, but we will. And we're also going to use draw to switch between our different stages that we've created. So we're going to make many functions as we go along, but we're going to start this out by saying if stage equals equals, let's just say zero for now, we're going to run a program called game. Uh, that just like so. All right. Now we don't actually have something called game, so I'm going to enter down below my draw and we'll make a new game function, function game. This is where we're going to put all the code to actually make things appear on the screen and people to move around, etc. Let's close that now before we forget. And we'll do some basic stuff. So first, let's actually set a window that goes around our game. Or actually, I guess we should start with uh, just the overall appearance here, sorry. So let's just start with the appearance of game. All right, we'll start with the background color. So I'm just thinking a nice sky blue. So we can do something like 150, 230, and 240. Should be a sky blue. At this point, we should actually be able to hit play and see. There we go. There's a nice sky blue. Next, we can do grass or some type of ground, whatever it might be. So I'm going to real quick just set no stroke. So I only want to fill. Set a fill of like a nice deep green, something like 100, 275. And let's draw a rectangle. This rectangle is going to be centered on our screen in the horizontal direction, so that's width divided by 2, but not centered in the Y. Uh, so we can do something like 450, so it's all the way at the bottom of the screen. And then we're going to set the width of the rectangle to be the width of the screen and the height of the rectangle to be, say, 100. So again, let's just press play, see what that looks like. There we go. And I'm actually going to put a border, a frame around my window because I have this entire blue box here, but really my programming window is much smaller than my screen. So I'm going to add one more element uh, that's a window frame. We'll do something a little bit different here. Let's go ahead and say no fill, but turn our stroke back on to be black. And actually let's set the stroke weight to be a little bit bigger, something more like 15. And then we're gonna draw another rectangle with these color parameters. So this one we're just gonna to set to be perfectly centered. So width divided by two, height divided by two, and the size to be the same as the width of the screen and the height of the screen. So that's width divided by two, height divided by two, width, height for our rectangle. Uh, and then again, let's just press play. Make sure we don't have any errors. There we go. Nice box around our screen. Now is a good time to save. Let's press save. We're going to call this platform style game. Just get that saved there. All right, the last part about this video tutorial that we're going to set up here, this first part, is we're just going to draw our characters and our box. So we're going to say draw box. And I want uh, something a little bit different for appearance here. I want the stroke to be black but I want the stroke weight to be a little bit less than it is. So we're gonna step that down to say five. Um, I wanna set the fill to be some type of nice bright retro sort of color. Give it a Mario vibe, maybe like a, uh, a dark orange or something. So we'll do something like 255, 120, zero. And then we're gonna draw our rectangles using our variables up on our in our global here. So we're just going to do our B1X, B1Y, B width, and B height. 
and that should draw our box right where we want it. There we go, nice orange box. And lastly, we're gonna draw our player. I like to do comments like this to break it up, so if something goes wrong or if I wanna change something down the road, very easy to find. Again, keep a zero black stroke. This time we're gonna drop in a fill, I'm thinking like a, a nice purple. 150, zero, 170. And again, just drawing a rectangle using our variables. So P1X, P1Y, P width, P height. There we go. Let's press play. Nice. So we have our window, we have our sky, we have our grass, we have our player, we have a box. In the next video, we're going to actually make these guys move around. So we're going to make our player move when we press some keys, setting up the foundation for jump, uh, jump code uh, and some additional functions and actually learning how to do what's called a library.